Enjoy the game.
worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. Mass for the 19th Sunday after Pentecost, the readings proper 24, year C of our liturgy. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. The colic on page 180, proper 24. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. Sit for the ministry of the word. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, beginning at verse 27. Jeremiah 31, 27 to 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of humans and the seed of animals. And just as I have watched over them to pluck up and break down to overthrow, destroy, and bring evil, so will I watch over them to build and to plant, says the Lord. In those days, they shall no longer say, the parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But all shall die for their own sin. The teeth of everyone who eats sour grapes shall be set on edge. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I have made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of those to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Psalm number 119, 119, verse 97 to 102, four, sorry, page 634. Oh, how I love your law. All the day long it is in my mind. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For your decrees are my study. Train my feet from every evil way, that I may keep your word. I do not 
shrink from your judgments, because you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste. They are sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your commandments I gain understanding. Therefore I hate every lying way. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, as it, it was, was in, in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and shall be forever. forever. Amen. letter of Paul to Timothy, chapter 3, 14, and then 4 to 5. As for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believe, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from ch childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message. Be persistent within the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with song doctrine, but have, having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachings to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke, the 18th chapter, beginning at the first verse. At that time, Jesus told the disciples a parable about their need to pray always and not lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by her continual coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And Will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant them justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This is the Gospel of Christ. Speak the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Reflect with you this morning on the reading from Luke. Luke gives us the point of this parable up front. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not lose heart. One storyteller says that this is normally not a good practice, but that in this case it is a plus and not a minus. Why? Because it lets us know what is most important without giving away the story. We know that the parable is about persistence in prayer. That said, we have to remember that a parable is not an allegory. The woman seeking justice is not us, and the unjust judge is not God. What this story does do is invite us to apply its points to our lives. We are to persevere, to be persistent in the face of indifference or maybe even outright hostility, knowing that God is with us. If we want a new life, we have to be persistent in doing what it takes to achieve it. And we have to remember, Sorensen Kierkegaard so wisely said, prayer does not change God. It changes the one who prays. Kierkegaard's point goes to the new life the renewed life in Jesus Christ. And he makes the point that prayer changes us from inside out so that our lives begin to reflect more and more God's life in our world. So how do we do this? Well, Christians have been trying to learn how to pray and to live authentically for centuries. It has been distilled in many books on prayer 
and Christian practice and living, often referred to as discipleship. And in those books and other things, persons have shared the experiences of their lives. What being a disciple means is seeking to follow the one who influence us, who impact our lives. In the case of Christian discipleship, it is seeking to live as a follower of Jesus Christ, which is what we say we are when we call ourselves Christians. And we recall that in his own life, Jesus prayed. And he taught his followers how to pray. And so if we really want to be followers of Christ, then we need to pray. Indeed, our relationship with God goes even further. It changes our very understanding of ourselves, and our world. As C.S. Lewis puts it, I believe in Christianity as I believe the sun has risen, not only because I see it, but because by it I see everything else. And St. Paul's understanding of our relationship with God is very similar. It is the bedrock of our existence redefining the very context of our lives. As he writes to the Colossians, as you therefore have received Christ the Lord, continue to walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. We pray then, because it is in our renewed nature to pray. It is the straightforward, natural result of our indwelling in the Spirit, responding to the love and self-giving of God through Jesus Christ. Again, C.S. Lewis says, I pray because the need flows out of me all the time, waking and sleeping. It does not change God. And this is really contrary to what is often assumed. God first reaches out to us rather than we to him. And he awaits our response inviting us into the life of the Holy Trinity. And so we pray because we respond to God's love for us. And so when Jesus tells the parable about the impertinent widow and the unjust judge, he isn't saying that God is like the judge, God is with us. And this speaks volumes and in practice relates directly to the widow's tactic of making herself present to the judge. If we are there often enough, sooner or later, we will realize that oftentimes God is more than the widow than the judge. And we will understand prayer just a bit better when we think that God is more like the, the widow than the judge. But just saying words is not enough. We have to inhabit them, we have to live them. And this is where the life of the church helps us to grow in our relationship with God. In our tradition, 
We are aided in our prayer by our worshiping together in sacred places, by the sights and smells of the liturgy, the sounds of the bells, The angel of the Lord brought the tidings unto Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the word became flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion, we brought unto the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so there are several things within the body of Christ, within the church, and this sacred space that aid in our prayer as we worship together. The sights and smells of the liturgy, the color of the vestments, the sounds of music and lifting our voices. We pray with our physical bodies as well as our thoughts and our words standing or kneeling in reverence, bowing our heads or genuflecting on our knee, on our knee. All of this is an act in out of our renewed nature, an embodiment of our all-encompassing relationship with God. And so in a sense, worship also involves these practicalities because very few of us will have exalted states of ecstasy and exaggerated parts to perfection. Rather, we should accept and acknowledge that the experience of living every moment with God is available to us right here and now because of God's grace. What it involves is our giving ourselves over to God, to doing God's will, as it is made known to us as we remain connected to God. So we can speak of the sacrament of the present moment in that Christian life is a moment-by-moment exercise in cooperation with God. This may mean that in prayer, we simply wait on God, look for or discern God's presence, and then cooperate through our actions, which then demonstrates how prayer changes us confirming us more and more to God's will and God's way. We should take stock of our prayer life from time to time to make sure that we are not stuck in routine recitation. If our prayer life consists of merely reading some prayers, 
Someone else has written, or simply lobbing things in God's direction in the hope that something will stick. We have misunderstood the purpose and the parable of Luke 18, 1 to 8. While it may not have been ideal, the widow and the judge had a relationship. Spiritual writers down the ages tells us that the relationship presence gets at the very heart of our prayer. Today and every day, may we persevere in our relationship with God and praise the means whereby we do so. So persevere. God won't change, but we will. And isn't that the point? Unto God be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forevermore. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 106. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The intercession, form F. Page 115. Let us pray for the church and for all people according to their needs. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. Bless and inspire all members of the clergy, especially Howard, our Archbishop, Leopold, our Bishop, Otis, our priests, that their lives may be examples of their teaching and that they may rightly and faithfully administer your holy sacraments. Guide and protect all heads of state and all who bear rule, especially those in this land. Susan, our Governor General, Ralph, our Prime Minister, Godwin, our Opposition Leader, all members of Parliament and all persons serving in local government. That our people be godly and peacefully governed. Direct those who administer justice and strengthen those who guard and protect the land. That our people may dwell in peace. Reveal the common good to those in positions of public trust and decision making and to decision makers in industry and commerce. That freedom and dignity may prevail among us. Enlighten with your spirit all places of education and learning that the whole world may be filled with the knowledge of your truth. Comfort and heal, comfort and help all persons who are in any trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially our own people in this church. Help us to help them, O Lord. Remember our brothers and sisters, especially those of this parish, and all others who have died in your faith and fear. Grant them peace and eternal life. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the witness of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, 
for the holy patriots, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have been good examples in the several generations. And finally, let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Accept, sorry. Accept our prayers and intercessions, Father, according to your wisdom, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The act of penitence, we're reminded by 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We are the body of Christ. By the one Spirit, we are all baptized into one body and have all been made to drink of the one Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
in our Book of Common Prayer, page 126. Father, we offer you these gifts which you have given us, this bread, this wine, and this money. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Father Almighty, everlasting God. Page 131. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all of the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Page 137, Form C. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. For on the night that He was betrayed, He took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, 
and his blood of the new covenant unite us to your son in his sacrifice that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. And so the gifts of God are for the people of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Preserve your body and soul unto eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord.
second post-communion prayer, page 148. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, strength and courage and all the persons in you. Amen. God of the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace, and the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. A pleasant good morning to everyone. We thank you for your participation in today's act of worship, and we extend a very warm welcome to those who are here with us for the first time, or even after a very long time. And we thank those of you who would have joined us remotely, whether it is via Facebook or YouTube. We are indeed happy that you have joined us, and we invite you to reach out to either the Dean or to any member of the PCC at the end of this morning's service. This week, Mass will be celebrated on Tuesday, being the Feast of St. Luke Provincial Wellness Day, Wednesday and Friday at 6 a.m., evening prayer on Wednesday at 5 p.m., and on Thursday morning, and on Thursday morning prayer at 6 a.m., and Bible study at 5 p.m., all at the cathedral. On Wednesday, October 19th, there will be the funeral of Mr. Elliot Douglas. And on Friday, the funeral of Mr. Rudolf Boucher, both starting at 1 p.m. here at the cathedral. The St. Vincent de Grenadines invites you to join in the Pink Cap City Walk. This will be on Friday, October 21st starting at 3.30 p.m., starting from Heritage Square. Next Sunday, October 23rd, there will be no service at the Church of Transfiguration. The congregants are asked to either worship at the 5.30 a.m. or at the 7 a.m. service at the St. George Cathedral. On the following Sunday, which is October 30th, the congregation at the Church of Ascension is asked to do the same. The Sacrament of Baptism will be held next Sunday, October 23rd, at the St. George's Cathedral during the 7 a.m. service. The National Independence Day service will take place on Sunday, October 23rd, next Sunday, here at the St. George's Cathedral, beginning at 4 p.m. This service will be led by the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Christian Council. And as most of you are aware, the annual Harvest Luncheon will take place today, Sunday, October 16th, at the St. George's Car Park from 12.30 until 3.30 p.m. Persons who wish to sponsor future live stream are asked to contact the church office. We wish you all a very happy Sunday and a peaceful and productive week. Stay safe and be well. I now invite you to come forward for blessings, be it birthday, anniversary, traveling, or whatever the occasion. Thank you.
bilang gigi guys itu gigi sih